Will you go see the order of the course? Not me. Please come. I don't like sports. I'm not competitive like Anthony. But don't let me keep you from going, Cassie. I'll go my own way. Brutus, I've been watching you lately. You seem less good-natured and affectionate toward me than usual. You've been stubborn and unfamiliar with me. Your friend who loves you. Cassius, don't take it wrong. If I seem careful, it's only because I'm worried with myself. Lately, I've been overwhelmed with private thoughts and inner conflict, which have affected my behavior. But this shouldn't trouble my good friends, and I consider you a good friend, Cassius. Don't think anything more about my distraction than that poor Brutus, who is at war with himself, forgets to show love to other men. The Brutus, <laughs> I have mis misunderstood your feelings, and therefore kept to myself certain thoughts I might have shared. Tell me, good Brutus, can you see your face? No, Cassius. The eye can't see itself, except by reflection in other surfaces. That's true. And it's too bad, Brutus. <laughs> that you don't have any mirrors that could display your hidden excellence to yourself. I've heard many of the noblest Romans, next to the immortal Caesar, speaking about you, complaining about the cruelty of today's government, and wishing your eyes were working better. What trouble are you trying to put me in? Do you want me to look inside myself for something that isn't there? I'll tell you good, Brutus. And since you know, you know, you can see yourself best by reflection. I'll be your mirror and show you, without exaggeration, things inside you that you can't see. And don't be suspicious of me, noble Brutus. Or your average fool, or if I made my feelings for you worthless by making the same promises of friendship to everybody. Or if you'd seen, if you'd seen me first flattering men, hugging them tightly, and later slandering them behind their backs. Or if you hear that I drunkenly declare friendship at banquets with all the gang, only then, of course, go ahead and assume I'm dangerous. Why are they shouting? I'm afraid the people have reached to their feet. Really? Are you afraid of that? Then I have to assume you don't want me to be king. I don't, Cassius. Though I love Caesar very much, but why do you keep me here so long? What do you want to tell me? If it's for good of all Romans, I'd do it even if it meant my death. Let the gods give me good luck only as long as I love honor more than I fear death. I know this quality in you, Brutus. It's as, it's as familiar to me as your face. Indeed, honor is what I want to talk to you about. I don't know what you and other men think of this life, but for as me, I'd rather not live at all than live to worship a man as ordinary as myself. I was born free as Caesar. So were you. We both have eaten as well, and we can both endure the cold winter as well as he. Once on a cold day, cold and windy day, when the river Tiber was crashing against its banks, Caesar said to me, Cassius, I dare you to jump into the rough, this rough water with me and swim to that point over there. As soon as he spoke, though I was fully dressed, I plunged in and called for him to follow, and he did. The water roared and we fought against it with vigorous arms. And thanks to our fierce competitiveness, we made progress. But before we reached the end point, Caesar cried, Help me, Cassius, or I will sink. And just as Aenus, the hero who founded Rome, emerged from the fires of Troy with his elderly father, Anchises, on his shoulder, I emerged from the Tiber carrying the tired Caesar, and this is the man who has now become a god, and I'm the wretched creature who must bow down if Caesar so much as carelessly nods my way. In Spain, Caesar had a fever, and it made him shake. It's true, this so-called god, he shook, his cowardly lips turned white, and the same eye who gazed terrified. Dear Caesar, I offer you the crown. Here, take it. No. Are you sure, Caesar? Yes. Are you sure, Caesar? Here, I offer- Oh! <laughs> World last clean. I heard his groan. Yes, I did. In the same tongue that ordered the Romans to obey him and transcribe his speeches in their books cried, Give me some water, Titanus, like a slick girl. It astounds me that such a weak man could beat the whole crowd and carry the trophy of victory alone. 
Another great shout. I do believe these applauses are for some new honors that are helped on Caesar. More shouting is all for Caesar. Why, Caesar? He straddles the world like a giant, and us petty men are under his huge legs looking forward to die as slaves. We take charge of our fate. It is not our destiny's fault, but ours. That we are slaves. Brutus, what's so special about Caesar? Why is he more superior than us? If you compare our names, they are as great. Brutus, what does Caesar do that makes him grow so great? Our era should be ashamed of him. Rome lost the ability to raise noble men. The last time Rome had one grand leader was at the beginning of time. Why do we have one now? You and I heard our father's talk would have let the devil himself reign Rome before he let them be king. The world lost its gleam. I heard its groan. Yes, I did. And the same tongue that ordered the Romans to obey him and transcribe his speeches in their books cried, Give me some water, Titanus, like a slick girl. It astounds me that such a weak man could beat the whole crowd, the whole world, and carry the trophy of victory alone. Uh, <laughs>